everyone, and welcome to Brussels. Are you an entrepreneur considering an establishment in Europe? Do you want to know what it takes to send an American staff member to Brussels or to recruit non-EU residents? My name is Massimo Maze. I am a lawyer specialized in migration law, and I will provide you with a short introduction to the general principles of economic migration to Belgium that a company needs to know when starting business operations in Belgium and sending over staff or recruiting non-EU nationals to Brussels. Should you be interested in coming to Brussels to expand your company's footprint in Europe, there are two main options available to you as an individual. Do you want to establish yourself as a self-employed person and you do not have Belgian, EU, EEA nationality, you will be required to apply for a professional card. An application for the professional card is filed with the Belgian consulate or embassy in the United States and transferred to the Regional Employment Authority. Once approved, you will be entitled to obtain the long stay D visa from the Belgian consulate or embassy in the United States, which permits travel into Belgium. Upon arrival in Belgium, you will collect your professional card. This card can then be used to obtain a residence card. In addition to the required documentation for the professional card application, the main objective for you as an applicant is to provide proof of the economic importance of your project. The economic importance is assessed in terms of job creation, productive investments, favorable economic consequences for Belgium and the companies established on the Belgian territory, the opening of markets, rare, innovative or highly specialized activities, or the filling of an unmet or insufficiently satisfied need. The Brussels region collects all the information necessary to examine this. Detailed description of the project, competence and experience of the applicant, financial capabilities, market research, financial analysis, contacts with trading partners, draft contracts, articles of association or draft of statutes of the company, etc. In short, all elements that allow an assessment of the usefulness of the project for the Brussels region. Simply put, the main thing is to convince the authorities of the feasibility of your project and therefore all relevant supporting documentation can be to your benefit. Once the professional card is approved, it will most likely be issued for a period of two years, but is eligible to be renewed. When renewing, you will need to prove that you're still eligible and that your company is still profitable by a presentation of the company's financial documents to the local authorities. The other scenario is for a US company that maintains a presence in Brussels to send an employee to work in the local Brussels entity with an employment contract in place. Within this scenario, there are different options available. The first and commonly used category is the single permit application for highly qualified personnel. This is actually a combined work and residence permit, applicable for sending someone to Belgium for more than 90 days. For the single permit for highly qualified personnel, there are two important things to consider. First of all, the employee needs to have a bachelor or master's degree. And secondly, there's a minimum salary requirement of around 44,000 euros gross per year, which when sending someone on assignment would mean 3,600 euros per month gross. The processing times for this type of permit is two to four weeks with the Brussels Regional Employment Authority, which is then forwarded to the Federal Immigration Office, which can take an additional two to eight weeks. Once the application is approved, you can obtain a long stay D visa and travel to Belgium. You will then have to register at the town hall and receive the single permit. The single permit can be valid for up to three years and can be renewed. One year after the issuance of the permit and on a yearly basis, you are required to prove the minimum salary requirement is met and notify the authorities, the so-called annual compliance notification. Another option for sending an employee to Brussels is a single permit available for executives who are sent over to lead projects for a company who already maintains some operations in Belgium. This is particular to managerial roles and does not require a bachelor's or master's degree, but the minimum salary requirement is higher, at around 73,000 euros gross per year. Further, a third option is the EU Intracompany Transfer Permit, also known as the EU ICT Permit, which is applicable for a situation in which a US company has a presence in Brussels and is sending a non-EU national to work in this location. There are three different subcategories for that permit, which are the manager, the specialist and the trainee. The manager subcategory is someone who will lead the entity or a department within the entity. 
The educational requirement for approval of this type of role is three years of higher education, and there's also a minimum salary requirement of 56,000 euros gross per year, which is about 4,700 euros gross per month. The second subcategory is a specialist, who has specialized knowledge or skills essential to the activities or management of that entity. Approval is also contingent upon three years of higher education and a minimum salary requirement of around 45,000 euros gross per year, or 3,750 euros gross per month. The third subcategory is that of a trainee. This would be a case in which a US national is sent to the Brussels entity in order to undergo training. The requirement for this is a university bachelor degree and a lower salary minimum of 28,000 euros gross per year, which is around 2,300 euros gross per month. The EU ICT permit is valid for three years, with the exception of the trainee which is valid for one year. There is also a cooling down period following the expiration or return of the employee to the home country, of three months for the trainee or six months for the manager and specialist categories. This means that upon return to the employee's home country, one must await the designated cooling down period before reapplying for a similar permit. A benefit of this permit is the associated intra-EU mobility rights. It would therefore be possible to work at the Belgian entity or even a client site in the Brussels capital region, but also other EU countries under this permit for the duration of the assignment, provided the company has other entities in those EU countries. The requirement is always that there needs to be an entity in Belgium or the other EU countries. Depending on the other EU country where the employee may be working or sent for an assignment, either you will have to notify the authorities or apply for another EU ICT permit. But in short, it allows US nationals to remain in the Schengen area for longer than 90 days in a 180-day period, 90 days per EU country in this case, which would otherwise be the maximum stay granted to a US passport holder. The benefit is that Brussels could be used as a launching point from which this employee could manage EU-wide operations through the intra-EU mobility rights afforded to this permit type. Finally, to send an employee for less than 90 days only requires a work authorization, work permit B, which can be obtained in two to four weeks and allows for the employee to work in Brussels for a period less than 90 days on his or her US passport. There are therefore far fewer formalities involved for this short-term authorization. The abundance of options and clarity of formalities for economic migration to Belgium, combined with the fast processing times, makes Brussels an attractive launching point for companies looking to establish seamlessly in the EU and work across the block. I hope that I have given you a clearer insight and hopefully this triggers your interest in setting up your business in Brussels. We hope to see you soon.